Eric Darling here with Darling Data, and uh, in today's video, we are going to talk a little bit more about the old T SQL and uh, why why you should probably learn it from me and not some other useless hump out there trying to pretend that they know about T SQL. Really, just stinks at T SQL and probably just had an LLM write everything anyway. Uh, <laughs> And in today's video, we're going to talk about derived tables. Uh, derived tables are, um, of course, my, my preferred, my generally preferred mechanism over common table expressions uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, mostly, number one reason is irking people who white knight for common table expressions. Uh, that's the top of the charts for me. But um, they can make queries they can rather they can simplify a lot of things in queries that would otherwise require quite a bit of syntax now part of the reason why derived tables are necessary is sort of because of again the way that logical query processing does stuff like like we, we, we talk about how like you know you have like it starts at like from rather than select and you know makes it way like down to joins and where's and group by and having an order by or select and then order by and because of that, there are certain things that you write in the select list that aren't available in the like group by order by unless you um, unless you unless you nest them right unless you nest the query and you give an, give like another from to start the logical query processing thing over with again, uh, which you know like I I make fun of people who like. Uh, are like we're rewriting SQL and we're gonna have it so you write from first and like uh, you can pipeline syntax because like every time someone critiques SQL the only two things they ever come up with despite like decades of like time that they could have like thought of something different it's always the same two things it's always oh from first pipeline syntax now the pipeline syntax thing I sort of get, but it's the way that they the way that they name it is stupid. You know, just looks like crappy PowerShell, and I hate it. Uh, DuckDB has a much smarter name for it. They, they, DuckDB calls it like like function chaining or expression chaining, where you can like like take the, like in one select list you can take like uh, you, like the the result of one function like alias does something, and then use it in another like function called within the exact same select list. Oracle also has uh, the ability to uh, reference aliases in the group by clause. So you don't have to rewrite expressions in the group by group by clause, which is amazing because like you can write some pretty like gnarly expressions that all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, I have to group by that now. Oh, cheese whiz. Um, and so like, you just like, you have to like copy and paste it. Remember to take the aliases out because you can't have like, you can't like group by some expression, like, or rather like uh, some, something equal to some expression and my SQL server freaks out, it can't handle it. So derived tables can like, at least for the way that T-SQL is engineered today, be useful for simplifying that stuff. What they don't do though, is change the way that your query your query plan physically looks, right? Because SQL Server still has to like process the query the same way, just with an outer sort of layer of things. So this is the query that we're gonna start with, right? And <clears throat> we're gonna select post ID and we have this upvotes thing, which is a sum, and then this downvotes thing, with the, which is a sum. And then, like, we're not gonna bother with the group by thing in here because we're not gonna group by those, right? Those aren't worth, those are things that we need to group, need or want to group by for this query. But if we wanted to write a having clause that, that did some math on those, like we would have to write a, oh, get out of here. We would have to write a lot of like extra code to do all this stuff, right? Like this is a, just honestly, this is a nightmare. And it makes me completely understand why people get mad at SQL. What makes things worse is that like, like, like when you, when you talk logical query processing, like you can absolutely reference expressions in the order by most of the time. But if we were to unquote this, we would immediately be greeted with red squiggles. And if we tried to run the query with like the alias downvotes minus upvotes descending, this would like, like this, we, like we would get errors there. So we have to like actually redo the whole order by thing in order to do that. 
where derive tables come in and can be useful is to sort of simplify that thing. And for some reason, oh man, I, so like I just switched to like the SSMS 21 general availability and I just upgraded SQL prompt to a new major version, uh, and it, but it's, it's revolting on me and it's trying to analyze my code and I don't need your code analysis. SQL prompt, I know what I'm doing. I teach the T-SQL here. You don't teach the T-SQL to me, SQL prompt. But what we can simplify things a bit uh, with a derived table is we can just write our inner query like we would normally here, but then outside of the query, we can reference these aliases like what I think is a, in a lot more clean way, right? Just where upvotes is greater than zero and upvotes is, or downvotes is greater than upvotes times 10. And then we order by downvotes minus upvotes the way we did in the thing, but it was all like expressions and it was a big mess. It was very, like it gets very unclear and very tangled up very quickly. But uh, what, what, just what I want you to notice about the, the query plans for both of these, if the good Lord will, will allow me to live long enough to highlight them both, is that they, they're, they're the same, right? SQL, like, it doesn't, like this doesn't change the query plan. This doesn't make the query faster, right? This doesn't, this doesn't help SQL Server like, like do anything. The, just like common table expressions, the results of derived tables aren't materialized in any way. Uh, it doesn't matter as much for derived tables because you can't re-reference derived tables in a way that you have to re-execute the query. But it, it like it like I'm just, like the point is that like you still have to apply filters the same way to this. It doesn't help you like like make like push filters down like any step further, right? So like if we look at what this filter does, uh, it's just like where expression. Uh, is greater than expression times 10 and expression is greater than zero. SQL Server has to do the same thing here, right? Like it's the exact same filter that we have to apply to both of these, right? And like we still have to sort by up here, right? When we look at what we're, like this is our order by clause. It's expression 1003 descending. And in this one, it is still expression 1003 descending. So no matter which way, like you write, the, like this is more like a query cleanliness. This is like a hygiene thing. That this makes like when we, we talk about things that makes queries like easier to read and easier to understand, like this is this is what does it for me. It's like like having these expressions just written once in the main part of the query, and then like just being able to reference those aliases because we have an outer we have like we have, we have the nesting we have the derived table, and then we can talk to those aliases outside of the derived table. Right? So that's where they really come in handy. That's like where they can really make a big difference. Now, there's all sorts of reasons why you would put a derived table in a query, of course. There's many, many uses for it. This is just one kind of like good sort of like code hygiene cleanliness one. So uh, important things about derived tables, uh, they're much cooler than table, common table expressions. Mwah, good job on those. Uh, and of course, they can make your queries a lot like more compact, cleaner, easier to read and understand. And uh, they can, they, they, you don't, like, well, it's not going to change performance. It is going to change your performance because it's going to change how fast you can figure out just what the hell that query is doing. So, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. Uh, all of this uh, content is av still available at the pre sale price down using the, the link in the video below. Um, it is still companion content to the pre cons that Kendra Little and I will be teaching in Seattle. And if you are attending those, of course, you will get free access to this content with pre con admission. So, I think that's everything, right? Do I have anything else to say? I don't think so. Uh, I don't know. Check out this neat SSMS 21. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Real, real nice looking. Dark mode, got co-pilot up there that sucks. <laughs> God, what a piece of crap that is. Anyway, uh, before, I, before I get too far off track, I'm gonna go now. All right, goodbye.